the villain kids, they're heroes now. These four were plucked off the aisle, brought into Oridon, and they did right. I am so happy this day has finally arrived! In the first film, they were kind of like bad with the intentions of hurting the good people. In the second film, they think maybe we're only good. And in the third film, it's like, no, you can be everything. We are no longer ashamed of where we come from. We're back in their neighborhood, waking up the aisle and bringing the good news. We're basically telling all the villain kids we all are going to be able to get our chance now. So that's sort of where we start out. Come on. I think that Mal's relationship is changing with everyone because Mal's relationship with herself is changing so immensely. Well, her relationship with Evie is the same. She's her best friend, but as well, she has to get some space from her. She has to get space from Jay and Carlos and basically become the person who she was meant to be. For 16 years, I had nothing. Since you last saw Jay, he really, I think, has found his place and found his meaning of what he wants to do and who he is as a person. He's becoming a man. Being Carlos again is a, is a fun time. He's sort of a guy that you really root for. He's a likable kid, and you know, being a likable kid is fun. <laughs> One of my favorite parts about Evie is her generosity and how big her heart is now. Everything she does is kind of guided by that, and you really get to see that in D3. Here they come. Mal and Ben are madly in love, and yeah, you, you propose. You get all lovey-dovey. Yeah, I do. There's a real vulnerability to Ben, which allows the room and the space for Mal to be awe-inspiring. Mal's a dragon. She has to have somebody who's very soft, sweet, and sensitive, and that's what Ben is for her. Down on my knees. Carlos and Jane are just the youngest couple, and it's so evident. They're still sort of infatuated with each other in like a very youthful, innocent way. And it's awesome because Mal and Ben have this sort of sophisticated relationship, and Carlos is still like stressing about Jane's birthday, like, oh, I hope I get her something good for her birthday. So it's a fun relationship, and you definitely root for them. It's fine. You know what? I can remake it. It's cool. It's fine. So as we know, Evie and Doug have been very close since the first movie, but you know, they're in that moment in a relationship where you don't know if the other person loves you. Like, does he love me? Does he love me not? You really see her become the teenager that she is and have the breakdown that we all have when we were in love for the first time. What would I do without you? It's something nice about revisiting a character that you've played once before. I know more about him, and I feel like I know more about him, and the character has become even more like myself. I'm really excited to sort of give him that growth that people have been wanting to see, and he's very sort of innocent and pure, and he has really good qualities about him. I am so sorry. It's okay. I am. As an actor portraying a character, I've always felt I had a really good handle on Mal. She's probably my favorite character that I've ever played, so it's incredible to be able to come back and show them where Mal goes next. It feels wonderful. It feels like a great privilege. My mom always says that friends are the family that we choose, and I think that is exactly who the VKs are. In times of need or in times of crises, you always kind of see them come together. You get so invested, you fall in love with these people, and you feel like you live in this world with them, and, and you want to, as an audience member, be let in on the rest of it. And I feel like the third one is really like a big step into the rest of it. Podobało ci się? Zasubskrybuj oraz oglądaj Disney Channel.